It's Monday, everyone, and that means we're answering questions inside of the Weld app. And what a great question we got from Andrea Cole inside the Weld app, which is a great segue from last week's episode of what welding machine do I put on the back of my truck? And it really went down to, what are you going to be doing? So today's episode is going to be focused on tools, equipment, things that you know you are going to need, and things that you probably didn't think of. So let's get into that. Just a quick disclosure guys, I've only ever been a single hand welder or a fabricator in the shop. I've never had to work behind a truck. So that's why I called on a lot of my friends on Instagram, like Fitter Bowen, Rodney Ross, R. Nuop, The Weld Scientist, Nasty Nate, and a couple of others. Space Welds, these guys have all helped me put together a list of all kinds of tools and equipment that you could possibly want on your truck. What they also told me is all situational. You never know what you're gonna get into until you get the job. It doesn't make any sense to bring 7525 mixed gas bottle to a stick welding job. You don't want to take up the room on your truck. Now you might need different equipment for different jobs if you're pipelining and you're doing some boiler work compared to going over around town fixing handrails. So there's a number of tools that you'll need for the job and again it's all situational and no one said this stuff was going to be cheap. So you're going to see a list of different tools and equipment that it's obvious to you that you need and some stuff that you don't know about. So we're gonna jump into that. We got a ton of things to go over. If you were to get everything on this list, you are ready to weld and you're gonna need one hell of a truck. So let's get started with these. Uh, let's we'll start with some big stuff. There's gonna be a ton of stuff in the back of your truck. Again, it depends on what you're gonna be doing. A bead hand on the right of way isn't gonna need as many tools as say a maintenance person for uh, you know, heavy equipment that's going out to the middle of a, a dig site and fixing excavators. They're going to need a lot more tools, a crane on board, compressors, all that kind of stuff. So that's really going to determine the footprint of your the back of your bed, the back of your truck. So you might need a custom bed. You may need to rip the whole thing up and build this big rolling toolbox, if you will. So we're going to go over all the big heavy stuff that goes with your welding machine obviously depending on the size of it right it depends on where it's going to go on the back of your truck you might need a compressor if it's not on board with your welding machine not to mention the hundreds and hundreds of feet of lead you're going to need i would recommend at least 300 foot of lead 150 for both sides and that's that's still not very much so you're going to need a ton of lead you're going to need an oxy fuel setup so that means you're going to need oxygen bottle and an acetylene bottle if you plan on doing any type of cutting which you know I really recommend having that on board it might help if you have a compressor and a small plasma cutter that you can run off of your welder you might have that opportunity to carry a plasma cutter in lieu of having that but you're gonna need the right power to power power that plasma cutter so those are some things to think about you're also going to need what else jack stands fabricating anything you're gonna need a lot of jack stands on board your truck so hopefully in a tight little knit spot where you keep them organized. Uh, you might want some short ones, some tall ones, different heads on top that roll, that swivel better, whatever it may be, depending again on what you might be doing. Pipe fabricators off the back of their truck have so many tools and a lot of fabricating hand tools and you're gonna need these jack stands and a rollout wheel. So you might end up needing something like this that's built for the back of your truck so that you can fabricate easier. You might need something like a pipe beveler all right, the pipe bevelers here are great. They're really just sits right on top of the pipe and it'll roll around it as you crank with your OxyFuel setup or if you can get a straight barrel torch for your OxyFuel or plasma cutter, you can run these bevelers. Now, again, it depends on what size pipe you're gonna be running. This will sit on a couple different sizes, but if it's gonna go up in size, you're gonna need a different beveler. No sense in carrying a bunch of bevelers if you're only gonna be working on one size pipe. So again, what are you gonna be doing? If you're one of those types of guys that's doing heavy equipment repair, you're going to need probably some chain falls, some come along, some bigger pieces of equipment to pull and tug and all that kind of stuff in order to get the metal where it needs to go. So that's another thing to think about and it needs a whole toolbox on its own. Mag drills, impacts, drills themselves, drill bits, socket sets, all those types of stuff uh, are going to be on board some of these pieces of equipment. Now of course you're going to need grinders, right? Okay, you're going to need a, a couple grinders with all your grinding discs, your cut wheels, uh, different sizes. When it comes to a four and a half inch grinder, that's pretty small. It's not likely that you're going to be carrying a four inch grinder unless it's just a really small job in a tight spot. But four and a half inch grinders, they're, they're kind of just cute. You want to go five inch, seven inch, nine inch, 
as far as those types of that type of work and of course you always want to have some sort of pencil grinder or die grinder a couple different burr bits and a couple flap wheels to go on there so that you can prep stuff to have little holes sometimes the holes get tiny and we need to get in there uh, cone rocks for your grinders i mean you need a ton of consumables for just your grinders alone and now we have all these power tools tools maybe even skill saws and chop saws because we're working on different stuff and we need to be cutting some stuff porta bands now we need extension cords. So not only do you need 150 feet of leads, but you need probably two or three, four or five extension cords on these job sites too. So that's a lot of things already that we're packing in and we haven't even got into hand tools yet. So let's try those out. Hammers, big ones, medium ones, small ones, maybe even some bigger ones. Crescent wrench, spud crescent. This is great for lining up holes or stabbing your helper. Channel locks. You know, you never know when you're gonna have to pinch and grab something or maybe put on a little puppet show. Good old pry bar to open those really difficult beers at the end of the day. A couple of these bastards. Maybe some wire brushes, stainless, carbon. I'd rather use a wire wheel. Clamps, all kinds of clamps. Okay, you probably need a lot of clamps. A pair of dikes. Maybe a set of pliers or two and some MIG variety pliers. You never know. These are just good for all kinds of stuff, not just MIG building. Impacts, drills, need them. A tape measure, laser beams, and some angle finders, digital angle finders. These are really great fabricating tools, especially pulling measurements, getting things to line up with your eyeballs. A plumb bob, so you can make sure that your bobs are plumb. Chalk line. You know, you never know when you're gonna need to pop a chalk. Gotta have some two-hole pins when two-holing flanges. If you're doing any type of flange fabrication, gotta have some two-hole pins. Pipe wraps, not only pipe wraps, but receipt paper. These are great for your layouts of pipe. Levels, probably need a lot of levels. You can never have too many levels. Gotta stay square level and plumb, bruh. Another digital angle finder for your little angles that you need to find. Center punch, gotta have that center punch. Great for, you know, center punching. In this case, you do want to be square. You want to have your carpenters, your combos, and your speed squares all on board, different sizes. You might even need something a lot bigger like one of these old dogs, because we're a big square. Chisels, punches, set of homemade oh, oh, plate dogs. A radius marker, compass, you know, makes you draw your circles really circular. Some basic hand tools like wrenches, ratchets, again drill bits, screwdrivers, allen wrenches, preferably more than one of each of these things. Yeah. If you're working for yourself and you're not working for a company, it's likely you're going to have to buy and supply your own welding rods, not to mention store them properly. So you're going to want to make sure you have proper containers, Rod Shield makes some good ones to put your welding rods in so that you can store your, basically your investment. If those rods go bad, you can't use them anymore and that's definitely a waste of money. So get a couple of those rod containers so that you can store your welding rods safely. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, again, with all the big stuff and all the little stuff combined, if you were to get all of this on one truck, your, your truck would be a, a rolling toolbox. But there's still more stuff to talk about. Austin, what could we possibly need? And it's the stuff that you don't think you need until you freaking need it. Like a big umbrella. Now I'm not talking about, you know, Mary Poppins. No, I'm talking about solar freaking eclipse umbrellas. You need big ones that are durable so that you can stay shaded. You want to be working in the cool shade. It's way better than having the sun beat down on you. I know that. Now you're bored. Now this welding stuff's getting boring. Now you need some tunes. You need to get a little crazy. So we want to have some Katy Perry blaring. You bring your own Bluetooth speaker, right? need a cooler. You got to have a cooler so that you can have waters and everything and keep them nice and cold. You also maybe want some portable stuff like fan and a table. Now I know that seems a little extra, uh, but having a little portable fan is really nice, especially if you're working in some confined spaces. And as far as a portable table, you never know when you might need just something a little bit extra of workspace, especially with all these tools that you're carrying around, you might need that portable table stowed on there too. One other big thing I want to point out is you never know what you're going to get into on some of these things. You might be getting filthy. So a pair of mud boots, you know, having some nice mud boots up to your knees. I, I can't say that, that that's just, you got to have those. Another pair of socks, another pair of underwears, change of clothes. You're going to want this stuff whenever you're done with that job and you're just, you don't even want to get in your truck because you're absolutely filthy. And I'll be the one to tell you, I'll get almost down to my skibbies on the right of way just so I can change into something clean and get home. 
So a change of clothes is absolutely crucial with some good mud boots. And if we're walking in the mud, we can avoid it. We need a mud board now, and now we need a step ladder too. Sometimes the pipes are not just on the ground, sometimes we need something a little higher. So having those on your truck are things that you may not think about until you're there and you're staring at him like, man, I wish I was just a little taller, or maybe I wish I had something to lay down right here so I didn't have to lay in the mud. And one of the last things is ratchet straps. Ratchet straps are just awesome just in general for just strapping things down or even pulling small spaghetti piping over to you. If it's just something that you don't need to break out something heavy like a chain fall or come along and you can get away with a ratchet strap, get them. Well, I think that's a pretty solid list to get you started as far as what goes on your truck. Again, whatever you think you're gonna be doing is what you need to focus around. Ask those questions, go to the Weld app and see what other people are doing. If there's something on your truck that you can't live without, let us know in the comments below. I'm sure that'll help whoever's really, who's watching this video. Guys, if you have any more questions, go inside the Weld app, tag me, Austin Hargett, in your question, and I'll be happy to answer your question every Monday. And if I don't get to it, someone will. Check us out, guys.